Welcome to East Tennessee Pinball. Got this really cool rock in here today. Uh, came in with the symptoms of, well, it's broke, as Joe would say. Uh, let me turn it on. It's turned on nothing. That should be blinking. Should have some digits coming on here, the zeros, digits, or something. Uh, real, this is the MPU board. Real common problem on these is this daughter board becomes, gets cold solder joints in the backside. So I'm just going to press on here and you watch the display. Get my finger in here at the same point. I'm going to put a little pressure. You see that? Booted right up. As soon as I take my finger off, it'll lock up. Yeah, it made a little sound locked up. So, uh, the solder joints at the back of this board are bad. It's either between the solder joints on, on where this is soldered onto this, or, so there's pins between these two boards, so it could be on the back side of this board. So really the way to take care of this is to desolder this board from this board, resolder the pins on this daughter board, and then resolder the daughter board back onto here. So it's kind of uh, a pain, you might say. Uh, Pinatech also sells this little device. They call it their, uh, what do they call it, the piggyback? If I can get that to focus in, yeah. Oh, the piggy do. Yeah. Uh, so anyway, it plugs in right here. And if you plug it in here and then you take this, the ROM and plug it, take the ROM, plug it in here and take this and plug it in here. And th it just supersedes this. You don't even have to take it off. You don't have to fix it or anything. You just put this, this board into here and it, the game doesn't use this anymore. And you don't have to worry about mess fixing it. And this is a... Uh, a uh, $60 part. I just saw it's not available. I just looked. Uh, they're, 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 it's listed on their site, but currently unavailable. Uh, so I'm kind of torn. This is the only one of these I've got, and it's kind of nice to have because sometimes this board, this little daughter board, will be bad, but you won't be able to just diagnose it like I did by wiggling it. Uh, and But you can stick this in there and here, and if that fixes it, you know this is a problem. Uh, so it's nice to have one of these around. I hate to use my last one if it's I can't get another one. So I may go ahead and just uh, take this off and resolder it. And if I have any problems, then I can always throw this in there. So this is the back side of the board on the bench here. Uh, this here next to my finger, those are the pins that are the, the solder points for that daughter board and they actually look pretty good here but you know like I said it's probably the solder points on the underside between basically up inside of there that you can't even you see those see those pins there between the two it, there's those solder points in there you got to get to so you got to take the board off first so uh, I'm going to go ahead and just desolder it real quick and see what it looks like. Okay, so I got this daughter board removed. It wasn't too awful bad. I had heard that these things are like really delicate to get off, but it it wasn't that bad. Uh, and if I look closely on these pins, these are the pins that would go through. Uh, there's several of these with have cold solder joints. That one right there. Uh, those two on the end right there. Oh, that one there at the end. So anyway, I'm going to reflow the solder on these uh, as well as I can. And uh, then re reinstall this, and hopefully that will take care of our issue. And uh, we'll have a stable platform, by the way, while I get this, got this out. Uh, this game had a battery. It was just barely hanging on here. And I believe it looked like an original battery, but uh, fortunately it hadn't leaked yet. Uh, but I'm going to put in a... Uh, Coin cell battery right there with a blocking diode, of course, and uh, and this maybe clean up. Let's see what the pads look like. Pads look pretty decent. Maybe just get a pink eraser and clean those up a little bit. Uh, they're actually in pretty good shape, and uh, this board will be ready to go. It doesn't look like it's ever had any work to it at all. It looks completely original, which is pretty nice. Anyway, uh, let me put this back. Uh, Resolder those joints, put this back in there, add a battery, and we'll plug it in the game, see how it works. All right, so I got my daughter board resoldered in here. Uh, that's the positive lead for the battery, that's the negative lead. I'm going to put in this uh, coin cell. A lot of times you end up having to drill a hole to get one of them fit, but fortunately, so that's the negative side. 
I'm gonna put the, this. Put that in there. It fits in there. The positive side will fit right where that solder point is there. And fortunately, that solder point doesn't go to anything. And I've verified that. So I'm gonna suck the solder out of there. So this will be laying right there with a negative side to that. And then probably on the back of the board, maybe on the front here, I'll put this diode here. You gotta have this diode because originally you had a rechargeable battery and with these uh, coin cell batteries are obviously not rechargeable. So you put a blocking diode. This diode is like basically a, a check valve electrically. So what it does, it elects, allows the electricity to go one way, not the other. It lets it, the electricity goes towards the banded side. It's hard to see the band, but it's there. It's on the top. Uh, it's focusing on here, in the wrong place. But anyway, it allows it to go to the top. So you want the electricity to be able to go out of the battery towards the plus side. That's where the top will be soldered. Uh, if you didn't put that blocking diode on there, this board would try to charge this battery at 5 volts. And this is a 3.3 volt battery. And so it wouldn't last very long like that. So you got to put a blocking diode when you replace a rechargeable battery with an alkaline battery. Anyway, uh, so I'm going to throw this in there, and uh, then we'll be ready to put it back in the game. Okay, I got the game, or the board back in the game. Uh, by the way, this little uh, Sentinel board over here, uh, best just leave that unplugged. It's supposed to, basically, if these games are on location and they haven't had the ground mods done, and this one probably hasn't yet, uh, so I'm gonna, I'll do that later. But in uh, any case, these keep the locked on cool off or staying locked on, but they, they cause all kinds of problems and it's best advised to leave these things unplugged, at least for home use. So I'm not gonna plug that back in the board. I haven't put it all the way in because it may end up coming out again. Uh, but anyway, so let's be fired up. And we are booted up. Uh, <coughs> So the sound is working. Sounds a little tinny, I'd say, maybe. Uh, some of the controlled lights were working there, blinking. Uh, it's not kicking the ball out, so it doesn't look like any of the solenoids are working. But we'll save that for another day. At least it's uh, breathing a little bit. It's off life support, so uh, it's got some more work to go, but at least we're booted up. So now we can, now we can work on everything else.